This provides more details about pointers. More specifically, this lecture focuses on the syntax and their meanings. This is a review of the previous lecture. We need to use pointers for writing the swap function. This slide shows the stack memory when the swap function has finished all statements and the top frame is about to pop. By using the addresses of A and B, the arguments M and N can modify the values of A and B even though A and B are not in the frame of the swap function. Please remember the rules for asterisk based on whether it is on the left hand side of assignment, or right hand side of assignment. Please be aware that the right hand side rule may be applied even when there is no equal sign. These are two examples. This example first creates an integer A and assigns 2020 to the value of A. Then, the program creates an integer pointer called P. Its value is the address of A. We can print the value stored at the address pointed by P. Asterisk P follows the right hand side rule. First, take P's value as an address. P's value is 100. Second, go to that address. Thus, we go to address 100. Third, read the value at that address. The value is 2020. This printf statement will print the value 2020. The next function call is another example. Function f takes one argument and it is an integer. When calling the function, asterisk p is given. This also uses the right hand side rule and reads the value of a. Hence, the value of t in the function f is 2020. We need to understand the meaning of data types. What are data types? They specify what information is available and what operations are allowed. In C language, some data types are already available, such as integer, character, and double. Programmers can create new data types, such as car, desk, phone, and light bulb. Why are data types important? Because data types tell us what we can and cannot do. Let's consider a new data type called car. A car has information about the engine size, the number of seats, the size of the fuel tank, and so on. These are the information about a car. You can drive a car. You can accelerate and decelerate. In contrast, a desk has length, width, and height. However, a desk has no concept of engine size. You cannot accelerate or decelerate a desk. You can write on a desk. If you have a data type of a phone, the information may include the size of the screen, the amount of storage, and so on. You can use a phone to make a call or to send a text message. Your phone may have map for navigation when you walk. You probably do not want to carry your desk when you walk. Your desk does not help you navigate. You cannot mix data types because you cannot send a text message using a car. Nor should you accelerate a phone. A phone has no engine. Do not mix data types because doing so makes no sense. Let's get into even more details about pointers. Imagine the T1 and T2 are two data types. We can create a variable x and its data type is T1. That means the value of x stores information about the data type T1. If we add ampersand in front of x, then we are getting the address of x. This is the data type of T1 asterisk because it is an address. Next, we may create a pointer called y. The value of y is an address. At this address, stores the value of type T2. If we add asterisk in front of y, then we either modify or read the value at that address. The value is type T2. Let's see some more examples. 
we first create an integer a and its value is 5. Another integer b has value 7. The third line creates a pointer p. This pointer stores an address. At that address is an integer. The fourth line assigns the address of a to the value of p. Please notice that the third and the fourth lines can be combined into a single line shown in the inserted callout here. They mean exactly the same thing. The fifth line changes the value of p to the address of b. Now, the value of p is address 101. The sixth line is an error because the types do not match. p is an integer pointer and i is an integer. The seventh line creates another integer pointer called q. The eighth line assigns p's value to the value of q. Thus, the value of q is address 101. Let's see even more examples. We can use the fourth line to do two things, creating an integer pointer and also assigning the value of p to the value of q. The fourth line can be divided into two statements shown in the callout. This is a review of the left-hand side rule. Asterisk p takes p's value as an address. p's value is address 101. Thus, we go to address 101. The third step assigns value minus 264 to this address. This is equivalent to assigning minus 264 to the value of b. The sixth line creates an integer c. C's value uses the right-hand side rule by reading the value at address 101. Thus, C's value is minus 264. The seventh line assigns the address of C to the value of Q. Now, Q's value is address 104. The eighth line is an error because their types do not match. C is an integer and Q is an integer pointer. The ninth line is also an error. C is an integer, not a pointer. Thus, we cannot store the address of A and C. The tenth line is an error because we, as programmers, cannot change the address of anything. Our programs have to take the addresses assigned by operating systems. The last line of this slide is also an error. P is a pointer and it must store as an address. The value 2020 is an integer, not an address. Thus, this is an error. This slide shows more examples of errors. All errors in this slide involve mixing types of integers and integer pointers. Mixing types is a common mistake. Please understand the type rules explained in this lecture. If you mix types, your programs usually cannot pass compilation and cannot run at all. In some cases, you can get an executable file but the program's behavior would be wrong. In most cases, GCC can detect the problems when you mix types. When this occurs, you must correct the errors. If you ignore what GCC tells you, your program will not work. The following is a true story. A few years ago, a student came to the office hour of a teaching assistant. The student said, my program does not work. I have not slept for two days. The teaching assistant asked, do you notice this GCC warning about types? The student said, yes, I will worry about that after making my program work. The teaching assistant said, this is your problem. You need to add asterisk in front of a pointer. The student said, it works now. I spent 30 hours on finding this problem. The teaching assistant said, it took me 30 seconds because GCC told me the problem. The student happily left the office hour. Please understand that GCC is usually good detecting type errors. However, Sometimes GCC fails to detect type errors. You must understand the types.
do not rely on GCC completely. Let's move to a new topic about types. So far we assume that everything takes only one unit of memory. We use 100, 101, 102, for E, B, P, and so on. This is not correct. Different data types need different amounts of memory. You can imagine that a car is very complex, with many components. In contrast, a desk is relatively simple. Thus, the information about a car needs more memory space than the information about a desk. This slide shows the sizes of different data types. In C programs, you can use size of to get the size of a data type or a variable. Size of returns a long integer. Thus, inside printf we need to use ld. The unit of size is byte. Each byte is 8 bits. Each bit can store two values, either 1 or 0. One byte is large enough to store from 0 to 255, if this byte is unsigned. If a byte is signed, it can store between minus 128 and 127. This program reports the sizes of char, int, float, and double. The values are 1, 4, 4, and 8 respectively. The second part of the program reports the sizes of pointers of char, int, float, and double. All of them are 8. The size of char is 1. However, the size of int may depend on machines. On this particular machine, the size of int is 4 bytes. The size of a pointer also depends on machines. On this machine, the size of a pointer is 8 bytes, that is, 64 bits. If your laptop or desktop was bought in the past few years, it is likely to have 64 bits as the size of pointers. You need to be aware that some machines may have fewer or more bits for the size of pointers. The previous slide uses data types as the input to size of. We can also give variables to size of. In this example, size of reports the sizes of E, B, and C. When we add ampersand in front of E, B, or C, we get the addresses and the size is always 8 because this machine uses 64 bits for the size of pointers. The program creates three pointers, PE, PB, and PC. Their sizes are all 8. If we add asterisk in front of the pointers, size of reports the sizes of char, in, and double. Thus, the values are 1. 4, and 8. It is extremely important to match types. This slide shows that IE is the type of int. We want P to be a pointer storing the address of IE. P's type must be int followed by asterisk. B is a variable of double. If we want to use Q to store the address of B, Q's type must be double followed by asterisk. If you understand that different types have different sizes, it should be easier to understand why we must not mix data types. Consider these examples. I is an integer and has 4 bytes. P is a pointer to char. Thus, the size of asterisk P is only 1 byte. If we assign the address of A to the value of P and then assign 2020 using asterisk P, problems will occur. P is a pointer to char and asterisk P will modify only one byte. However, 2020 is too big for one byte. Thus, the program will not successfully store 2020 in A. The next example has B as in that it has 4 bytes. Q's value as address of B. The 8th line uses the right hand side rule of using Q this is a problem. The right hand side wants to read 8 bytes because double has 8 bytes. However, B has only 4 bytes. Where will the other 4 bytes come from? 
The other four bytes will read four bytes from the memory adjacent to the memory for to be. We do not know what these four bytes are and the program will likely do some strange things. Do not mix types.